Hey guys, welcome back. It's Jonathan and Tim down here in the library. One room schoolhouse. It's Friday, so we've made it through another week. We've got some <sighs> more stories. Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I really was needing some time at home, so now yeah. the weekend's here. I can spend more time at home. <laughs> now Woo. we can, you know, party, reading our books and stuff like that at home. By ourselves, six away yep. from our friends. It's great. <laughs> it's awesome. But I uh, hope you're doing really well. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately today, we can help maybe some of that slow time go faster. And obviously we've been praying every day. Absolutely. Um, praying that if, if you're a business owner, uh, wherever yeah. you work, that, that it's going well, um, that God continues to bring blessing and provision. And so we're believing that God's gonna help us navigate and get through this. But as long as we have some time, let's go back and continue to learn some moments of history where it can be helpful, beneficial for us today. We've been spending this week looking through the revolution. We've talked about a lot of different guys who signed the declaration. So we're kind of finishing that up now. And so we have several things yep. we're gonna talk about, some more people we wanna to point to and help tell their story. And in talking about the Founding Fathers, one of the things that I like to look at are the things that they did outside of the really big, really famous things. And what we have here is actually one of those things. It is a two-volume Bible. This is one Bible, two volumes, now, massive. Yeah, let's just point out for a second. Imagine having to carry this to church with you. It's a two-volume set. It's, it's weighty, and it's called the Hot Press Bible because it was used, it was printed, it was designed and made for this new kind of technology called hot press, which it would heat up the ink before it applied it to the paper, which would make it last longer. Was and the I, idea. Yeah, that was the idea. Whether or not it works, I don't know. Um, but it actually works pretty well because if we open up to the inside and you actually have a whole bunch of family information from the people who owned it, which is pretty cool. You can actually see some of the dates here, 1799, 1800, uh, these children, 1794, 1796. Um, so a lot of kind of fun information and Bibles are, are great for that, having a lot of family information. But we open it up to the title page. You can see just this awesome lithograph, this engraving, um, just absolutely beautiful. But if we come over here, write the Holy Bible containing the Old and New Testament together with the Apocrypha, original tongues. It was done by John Thompson and sometimes called the Thompson Bible, but you can see here from the hot press of John Thompson. Uh, however, it's done in 1798, uh, and if we open up, you've got, before you get to the text of the Bible, you have what's called the subscriber's names list. And I mean, you've got hundreds of names here, but what is so a So this was the early click the link to subscribe, right? This is the page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go to our These Facebook, These are your followers. So it's actually a little bit different than what we think of the word by subscribe. Now, if you look, these are huge Bibles. Yes. They would have been so expensive to produce. And printing back then, uh, generally I mean, on a single type press, so it takes you a long time yeah. to have to put the individual letters uh, right, uh, obviously spacing everything else. It is typeset a huge, time-consuming, costly months endeavor. And months yeah, at a time, not even a year. Uh, and so, in order for people to be able to publish and produce books like this, they would have to get a lot of upfront money. Now, how do you do that? Well, it's kind of like I a got an idea. Let me go to my friends. I'm gonna, hey, I got, I got this idea. If you give me twenty bucks, you can have one once I do it. So really, yeah. an early idea of like a GoFundMe. Yeah, right. If you give me twenty dollars, you get a T-shirt. I'll sign you a little card. But what they did is right. If you subscribe to it, that means you're giving money up front, and then you'll get the book whenever it's published. What's so interesting about this, right? 1798. There are dozens of names of founding fathers in here who paid to have this book produced. People and and to, to have it produced, it also means that not only are you gonna get a copy, but you're helping fund extra Everybody copies else. to be done so other people can have it, which yeah. means for a founding father to have given money, not only were they gonna get something, but they're supporting the project. And so to support a Bible, it gives indication that yeah. they thought this was a good project right. to give money to support. What does the Bible say? Your heart is where your treasure is? Yeah, where, where your treasures are, your heart will be also. And Got so, the translation. I mean, <laughs> We're going to read some Bible. Actually, we're just going to open this and we'll cover some of that. Yeah, but the idea, you're right, is if they're giving money to this project, then certainly their heart has to be on some level thinking, this is a good idea. Yep. We're going to support this Bible. And so we have people like Thomas Jefferson actually helped fund this. John Hancock, who we talked about yesterday. James Wilson, who we also talked about yesterday. Uh, Alexander Hamilton, John Dickinson, and a whole bunch more yep. people. You can find some more people A lot online. of notable names for sure. But... 
what's so cool about this is it kind of provides one of those things that in the years after the Declaration of Independence, these guys who were so influential, who were leaders, were continuing to lead. Uh, one of the guys who signed this, signer of the Declaration, his name is Thomas McKean. We actually have some uh, documents from him, one right here. And you can see his name is signed right up there. It's almost covered by the seal, but you can see Thomas McKean. And his story is after he went, you know, was a signer of the Declaration of Independence, a leader there. He actually later became a judge, even a governor in the state that he was in, uh, Pennsylvania. But as a judge, one of the interesting things that he did, we actually have a, a book here which records one of his court cases. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up and show you what happened. So it behooves you to seek the conversion, advice, and prayers of pious and good men to be importunate at the throne of grace and to learn the way that leadeth to happiness. May you, reflecting upon these things and pursuing the will of the great Father of light and life, be received into company and society of angels and archangels and the spirits of just men made perfect. And may you be qualified to enter into the joys of heaven, joys unspeakable and full of glory. So at the end of this... I mean, that's a pretty common thing for a judge to do, right? <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. Somebody sent us to die. Hey, I want you to think about your faith and make sure yeah, you're ready. You know, go go home, rethink your life. Yeah, no, um, that's totally common. Well, actually... Right. Although not common today, there's several examples back in the Many early yeah. days of America, founding of America, where judges did this kind of stuff, reminding people, because largely, even though not everybody was a Christian, the Christian principles were the thing largely taught to people. So everybody had heard this idea before. So you have a judge, a sign of the declaration who's saying, guys, before you die, make sure you're right with God yeah. so you're prepared to enter into glory. That's a really cool thought Huge from the sign of the declaration. Yeah, yeah. Another one of the guys that helped fund the Bible was a guy by the name of Samuel Chase. He was a signer of the Declaration. We actually have a document signed by him. And there's a right Chase here. way over here. Way over yonder. That's Samuel Chase. Hey, Sam. But this is one of his documents that he signed. has a nice little signature. But what's interesting about him is that later he actually was appointed to the Supreme Court of the United States but he deserves or he gets a lot of recognition because he's actually the only Supreme Court justice to have been impeached. It was actually the Jeffersonians, Jefferson's party. Uh, Samuel Chase was a part of the Federalist Party, so there was a lot of kind of animosity. Jefferson really didn't like that there were so many Federalists on the Supreme Court. Jefferson actually writes to the House of Representatives, kind of bewailing the fact that Samuel Chase is allowed to stay on the court. One of the young upstart Jeffersonians in the House says, well, then we'll just take him off. So they start these impeachment proceedings against Samuel Chase. Actually, Interesting that impeachments were political even back then. Uh, yeah, uh, but what's really interesting is when he got into the Senate trial, uh, the presider over the Senate trial was the then Vice President Aaron Burr, who had actually recently shot and killed signer of the Constitution Alexander Hamilton in a duel. So there's a lot of tension in the room, to <laughs> say the least. But Samuel Chase is one of his attorneys that actually got him acquitted on all of the charges was the son of another signer of the Declaration, Francis Hopkinson. Yeah, and we've talked about Francis Hopkinson before. Francis Hopkinson is a guy who is considered responsible for this. Uh, it is a hymn book, and you see it says the Psalms of David. Francis Hopkinson was the choir director and psalm leader at his church. And what he did is took the 150 Psalms of David and put musical notation to them. He wanted his church to be able to sing the Psalms just like David had sung the Psalms from thousands of years earlier. So really a significant thought from a, a guy who signed the Declaration. Francis Hopkinson also is the one who helped design a number of seals, credited yep. with a great seal, uh, yeah. took claim for creating the first American flag, even though it really wasn't used largely. But nonetheless, he did a lot of things related to really kind of foundational guy. principles. Yeah, foundational yeah. Uh, things in America. And so then having a hymn book, uh, well, again, one of the things that we talk about, what's overlooked a lot is we don't know much of their faith and much of their story. And so we try to spend a lot of time wall builders going back, learning more of their story, their faith, their family, their accomplishments, their education, some principles about who they were and what they did. Well, this sign of the declaration, his son, as you mentioned, is the guy that actually defends another signer Chase. at right. the time, Supreme Court Justice. So, and then another one of the guys who helped fund this Bible was a man, he's a very famous founding father. In fact, he was one of the three guys who helped write the Federalist Papers. He's associated with the Constitution, but he actually never signed the Constitution or 
really uh, any of the founding documents of America, except now, for the treaty ending the war between Great Britain. He, he um, also is a, a Supreme Court justice eventually. Yep, later. Right, so he, he does get some notoriety yeah, at some point. He's certainly a founding father. But, but that's John Jay. Yeah, John Jay. <laughs> Important to say the name, huh? So, but John Jay was interesting for a number of respects because in addition to helping fund this Bible and all the other things we just mentioned, he was also one of the leading guys in the American Bible Society. Mm -hmm. Right here we actually have, it's 1816, it is the Constitution of the American Bible Society. And you can go through, you can find this online, but what's so interesting about this, at this time, John Jay is the Vice President, but if we open it up, it actually has a list of the officers of the American Bible Society, and it is like a who's who of founding fathers. A lot of notable founding fathers, for sure, yeah. So this right here is the Constitution of the American Bible Society, but inside it has a list of names who are the officers of the Bible Society. And as you go through it, Tim, you'll see actually yeah. see a lot of notable names. And, and I will see those, and I'll even tell you about those. So at the top, uh, the guy who is the kind of the president of the American Bible Society, his name is Elias Boudno. Elias Boudno was the president of Congress when we ended the American Revolution. So you mentioned uh, Jonathan, John Jay was one of the guys who signed the Peace Treaty of Paris ending the revolution. Elias Boudno was president of Congress when that happened. If you go down the list, what you will find is a lot of these guys were military leaders, were uh, political leaders, were uh, civic leaders, as you go through the list of these names. But among these, uh, so Caleb Strong was uh, a governor, um, was a political leader, uh, John Cotton Smith, uh, uh, Bushrod Washington, uh, Charles Coteworth Pinckney. Um, so guys who were very involved in the process were involved politically. Um, and not only are they involved in the political process and the military process of the revolution, they then become leaders and saying America needs to have a Bible society. And, and really, you can look up these names and find out a lot of details about yeah. them. But when you have your political, your civic, your military leaders that are saying, we need the Bible in America or it's important enough that I'm going to serve as an officer to help make sure the Bible goes out, this is a really big deal yeah. looking back. This is actually one of the Bibles that the American Bible Society helped produce and pass out. This one actually significantly smaller than the Hot Press Bible, much more designed for pockets. A little um, easier to take that one to church with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this also right here is a document signed by John Jay while he is president of the American Bible Society. You can see here, it's actually a certificate for membership. And, and lots of famous people have been presidents over the years because John Quincy Adams also served on the American Bible Society. John Marshall served on the American Bible Society. So over time, a lot of people have served on the American Bible Society, and this society still exists today. Uh, they're still doing a lot of work giving out Bibles today. A lot of so translations worldwide. Absolutely. People aren't able to get to the Bible. So uh, started by the Founding Fathers, continue to this day, kind of like America. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good point. So as we are finishing up this week, uh, one of the things that uh, we continue to mention is that most people today, they don't know many of the stories of the Founding Fathers. We don't know their faith, their family, their accomplishments, their education. We just don't know who they were and what they did. And we hear a lot of false generalizations about they yeah. weren't good, they were bad, they weren't religious, et cetera, et cetera. And, and even though some of them might fall into certain categories, we just don't know enough of their stories to know who did what. And so we want to spend some yeah. time helping us learn those stories. So hopefully this week you've learned some of those stories, learned some details you didn't know. I'd I know you. I have. <laughs> there you go. On the Wall Builders website, we have so much more information. You can go uh, and, and th really thousands of articles yeah. that we've gone through. A lot of these documents we've shown are scanned, uploaded. You can go and read some of these for yourself. So a lot of good stuff there. Then also we have all kinds of videos on social media, different platforms where you can learn more and see more of this. And as long as we're still in lockdown, we're going to keep doing this thing with you, kind of dedicated to the one-room schoolhouse. It's essential. And, and we, we are essential. So we continue to come, and later we'll go and lie saw ourselves down because we've definitely violated the six-foot rule and proximity. But after the videos, we stay way away from each other, so it's totally fine. We don't even talk outside of work. It's, it's almost <laughs> true. But uh, we are praying for you guys. If you have any questions, thoughts, uh, put them in the comment box. We'd love to be able to pray for you. And if there's specific yeah. ideas that we can help answer in a video, we will do that going forward. But God bless you guys. We'll see you next week.